how much can the, these companies start to deliver here? How much of an issue are they going to have if they don't? Well, I think this is one area where, you know, once again, bad is bad. Okay, so I would argue that, you know, weaker economic data is potentially good for multiples generally, at least if you're delivering on the earnings. But if you have bad earnings reports, you're going to get punished. And that's been consistent all year, which is why the average stock is down this year. The average company has not had good earnings results. That's and a I good point to make, Mike, yeah. by the way, because yeah. we talk about, you know, Jess Menton from our equities team writes about this earnings expansion that we're in three quarters in a row of growth but it's only seven eight maybe ten companies the other 490 in the S&P are not doing well so what has to happen for them to grow to increase their earnings to, to do well yeah well first of all it's more than seven companies but it's not more than probably 30 or 40 so it's narrow it's like a nifty 50 almost is what I would right. characterize it now what needs to happen well, once again we need the Fed to cut like meaningfully we need a curve to re-steepen we need cost of capital to come down we need a labor market to loosen up in a way where you know these smaller businesses can can actually hire people at a reasonable price. They need pricing power to come back. One thing that gets overlooked is companies are losing pricing power now. So while we're all rooting for lower inflation, once again, weaker inflation is not great for earnings. You know, small cap businesses, small cap companies like Russell 2000 typically only does well coming out of a, of a recession, coming out of a new cycle. Why? Because rates are low, curve is fully steepened, access to capital is abundant, and they have operating leverage again. That's just not where we are. So so we need we need rates to come down as number one, or we need some sort of exogenous positive shock on the growth side that doesn't lead to an inflationary problem. So you, you tell me where that's coming from. I think it's going to be a, cha it's a challenge. And that's why we're not, we're not going to fight this trend. I mean, the momentum is so strong because it's right. <laughs> now, what worries me is that that momentum is so strong and people have a lot more exposure to high multiple stocks than they think they do. And if you have an event that's unpredictable, then you could have a real reset on valuation of 10 15%. Like, I think the chance of a 10% correction is highly likely sometime between now and the election. Not just because of the election, but because uncertainty Certainty is going to prevail for a lot of different reasons. Earnings reasons, you know, election outcome reasons, some of the things you mentioned earlier around tariffs, potentially immigration, Fed policy still remains uncertain. So yeah, I think the third quarter typically is that period and it's going to be choppy. Now we're hoping that's going to create some opportunity, but like right here, valuations to me look very, very unexciting.